Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. This is the Profit Break. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you're going to be well on your way to improving yourself and your profitability. Now, while artificial intelligence or AI is the buzzword of the year, what does it really mean for all of you running a small business? Well, you're in luck because on today's show, we're going to talk with Mr. Steve Lurch, who is a former Google executive. He taught uh, innovation philosophy at the global headquarters and is now president and founder of Story Art Consulting. Now, besides being a sought after keynote speaker and AI thought leader, Steve also provides consulting services with various organizations on strategic planning, digital marketing, and consumer analytics. Steve, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Awesome. Well, hey, you are quickly becoming a great friend and resource to the industry. So today we want to tap into your knowledge on AI and maybe dig a little specifically more into the marketing side. How do we use this tool to build our business? But before we do that, um, as a former Google executive, uh, you folks were probably thinking about AI before it became mainstream, which now we, we think it's relatively a new topic, but the reality is my guess is it's been around for quite some time. So uh, can you share us a little bit about maybe your previous work and, and how was Google thinking about or even thinking about AI you know, some years ago? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. And it, it is funny how um, people feel like AI, some people feel like AI was invented last year by ChatGPT. Um, and, and in fact, it's, I think AI is around 70 years old by most people's standard of what artificial intelligence is. Uh, when a, a professor, I believe it was at MIT in, in the 1950s, invented a machine that could basically teach itself to play checkers without sort of explicit prompts, which is really all artificial intelligence is. It's, it's a machine that instead of programming specific rules into it, it sort of can observe or learn through data and figure out the rules itself and, and, and figure out how to act itself without being explicitly programmed to take an action. So yeah, AI has been around for, for decades, for lifetimes, for several generations. It's certainly become more mainstream as it's gotten better and more consumer facing through tools like ChatGPT. But, but yeah, it certainly was something at Google that we've, we've used and been talking about for a long time. And um, really that's true at most companies, even outside of the Silicon Valley and outside of tech, probably a lot of companies are using AI and maybe not even realizing it or not calling it AI. Uh, certainly at Google, we had things like, you know, smart home, Google home, Google assistant kind of stuff just like Siri, just like uh, Cortana, just like Amazon uh, Alexa, those are all forms of, of artificial intelligence. Uh, just as when you're shopping online on Google Shopping, let's say, or more for more people on Amazon, and you're getting those product recommendations, um, that's a form of artificial intelligence. And certainly in the marketing space, which is where I spent most of my time at Google when I wasn't teaching innovation, uh, we use machine learning, which is a, a specific offshoot of artificial intelligence, we use that for, for everything from how we figure out what websites to put ads on to figuring out how much to uh, advertisers should pay for different impressions, for different clicks, for different experiences, optimizing ad campaigns, even designing ads. Um, so there's there's so many ways artificial intelligence has been integrated into into Google and into my work in the marketing world for uh, literally decades. Um, so yeah, it's 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 gotten better, it's gotten different, it's evolved, but it's not new, I guess if you, if you think of it that way. Good. Well, thank you. So while it may not be new, it, it's probably new from a practical standpoint to a lot of our folks joining us today. So let's drill down. I know you're very passionate about marketing. It's one of the things that uh, enjoy having conversations with you about. So why is AI such a valuable tool specifically for those of us uh, in, in the small business space for marketing? Yeah, I, I think at this point, marketing mar and marketing related functions. So digital websites, social media, PR, communications, advertising. I think all the stuff sort of in that realm it might be what tools like ChatGPT do best, which is really saying a lot because the truth is, I think tools like ChatGPT do a million things well, um, but when it comes to creating content, I, I think is one of the places where it's strongest. Um, the ability to, to quickly and originally and creatively create social posts, blogs, articles for your website, emails, press releases, 
um, to be able to that written content, to be able to produce it rapidly and at a high quality. Um, and, and this might sound strange, but one of the reasons it's so good for marketing is creativity which isn't something we inherently would assign as a trait to a computer or to a machine, but the ability to sort of think differently, to think outside the box, to think different from you, which can be really valuable to a marketer, especially maybe one who, um, let's say you own a bowling center, you run a bowling center, maybe advertising, maybe funny social posts, maybe creative ideas for video ads, whatever it is, Maybe that doesn't come naturally to you. Maybe that's not how you usually think of things or think of bowling. The ability to ask a tool like ChatGPT or Gemini or Copilot to, to try these things, to experiment with these things, to create things that are funny, that are weird. And, and you can literally tell it to do that, to create a social post and make it funny and make it weird and make it different. Um, so I, I think there's just, it's so good at creating content, especially written content, but becoming better and better at visual content, images, videos. So, um, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on, but it's just really good at creating content. It's really good at thinking outside the box. Um, and, and I think that's huge in marketing. Yeah. Now you threw out a couple of names there that might be a little, uh, Greek or foreign to some of us there, but let's drill down and talk about a few tactics, maybe some specific tools. It seems like there is new stuff coming into the marketplace, I don't know, every day, every week about, about uh, popping up about AI products. If we were gonna start on things like content creation, social media, are, are there some basic blocking and tackling that you would recommend for the average uh, small business operator yeah. that's charged with marketing? Yeah, the, the, the truth is about AI is it, it can be overwhelming for a number of reasons. One, because Deep down, the technology is the most complicated thing humans has ever come up with. That shouldn't be intimidating to us because we don't need to understand any of that to use it and take advantage of it. But it can also be intimidating because there are so, so, so many tools, resources, companies who are telling you, hey, I've got the right AI solution for X, for fill in the blank. And there's a hundred different solutions for whatever that X might be. I think for most people, for most beginners, it makes sense to start and to primarily use one of the bigger, broader, more simple generative AI tools. And what a generative AI tool is, is it quite simply that. It's an AI tool that can generate new ideas and new content. So it's not just pulling from links or pulling quotes from places. It's actually creating thought. Um, and the, certainly the most known of those tools is ChatGPT. Um, Gemini is Google's version. Copilot is from Microsoft. There's others. But for most people, and I'll tell you the truth, I mostly use Gemini as a person who worked at Google for a long time. But for most people, ChatGPT is a great place to start. You can use it for free. There's a paid version that's a little more advanced, but diving into a free tool like ChatGPT and just asking it some basic questions. And some of the stuff I already mentioned about creating content is a really great and simple place to start. And with these tools, you can give it as much or little information as you want. You could say, hey, write me 10 social posts for my bowling center, and it'll do that. Or you could say, my bowling center is named X. This is the address. These are the types of discounts we have. We think we have really good hamburgers. We have an arcade. We want to attract more teenagers. Our, our area we're located in is very urban. You can give it as, and then say, knowing all that, write me 10 social posts. Obviously you'll get different results from those two questions, probably a little better for the second one. And again, customize even further saying, I want these social posts to be silly. I want these social posts to appeal to 20 year olds. Um, I want these social posts to appeal to women. I want these social posts to highlight some of the discounts I offer on my website. Um, so I think starting with some basic questions like that, like social posts, um, as well as written content. I think one thing that from all the bowling center owners I've talked to so far, one place I think that maybe we need a little help is on our websites and maybe creating a little more content for our websites, more articles, more blogs, more stories about bowling. Um, having ChatGPT write some content for your website. Ask it to write a funny story about the history of bowling. Uh, ask it to write uh, the rules of bowling in a very simple and engaging way. I think the ability to do those types of things, and you'll be amazed when you start asking it to do those things, and it does it in seconds, not minutes, not hours, not days. Uh, you'll be really blown away. But there's some basic stuff like that I think you can start with that'll that'll go a long way for most most bowling centers. And it sounds like you know what I hear you saying is that not only 
are, are, you, is, are you able to have this content produced at a fraction of the time? You're able to do it very cost effective or free, but maybe most importantly for small business owners is you have access really to, to the world's greatest marketers. It's, it's amazing. I, I've often said that talking to AI is like if you just had a room full of like a thousand geniuses who all are fully accessed to the internet and all ready to go, who will just help you brainstorm on whatever your thing is. And they won't be judgmental and they won't think you're stupid for asking stupid questions. <laughs> and all of the ideas and insights they give you are yours. They're, they're not things you're stealing. They're created for you. Um, it's, it, it really is hard to understand how how cool this stuff can be until you start playing around with it. And it's it, the one thing I'll add to that too is I think a lot of people think of AI as a tool to create content and it is, and it's so good at it, but it's also a great tool for making your content better. So you could take your social post, you could take the article you wrote, the email you wrote, the press release you wrote, put it into ChatGPT, just copy and paste and say, hey, ChatGPT, make this more concise. Hey, make this more professional, make this funnier, make this more SEO friendly, fix the grammar, make it APA grammar style. Like you can not only have it create new stuff, but if you want to start with your own ideas, you can ask generative AI to polish, to improve, to, to simplify, to add humor, whatever you want to do. So it's, um, it can start from scratch or it can just be your sort of little buddy to help make your stuff better. Yeah, that is a great, great tip, Steve. And I hope everybody captured that is, this is not only a tool to help uh, small business operators like everyone tuning in today to start fresh, generate new content. It can also take what you've already worked with and refine it, make it better. It's almost like having a, a tutor or an expert, uh, you know, go over, yeah. it's amazing. So, hey, before we let you sneak away today, I've got, got one more for you. Always love to get your insights when you and I are together because you're, you're a thought leader in this space here. And I know it's always tough when I ask you to rub the crystal ball and tell me what's going to happen in the future, but I'm going to ask you anyway, from a marketing perspective, as a fellow marketer, uh, if we join together and break bread five years from now, I mean, wh wh what are we going to see? Is it going to be like iRobot taking over the world or wh wh what's the future hold in this space? It's, it's so crazy that the answer to that question you just said about iRobot taking over the world is maybe. Um, it, it's so crazy just how little we know about where this technology will take us. Um, and that goes for marketing, just as it goes for any other walk of life and walk of business. And you could talk to, you could interview the hundred smartest scientists in the world, the hundred most successful business leaders in the world, and you'll get a hundred different answers about what the world's going to look like in five years or 10 years. Um, but what I say to everyone, no matter what your job is, you will be better served learning about AI now. And you have to learn a lot. You don't have to understand the science behind it or how to write the code, but just learning a little bit about what's possible and what's what is and isn't available to us, that'll put you in such a better position no matter where this sort of AI journey goes. And, and I do think, and I'm a marketer and I think about marketers, I think this is gonna replace jobs for sure. When, when you go in and you ask it to write you 30 Facebook posts to make them all funny, to give it all the info about your, your, your company, ask it to do hashtags and emojis and all this stuff. And the fact that it can turn that around in maybe a minute, if I ask for 30 posts, and they'll be all unique, all relevant to different times of year, all funny, all engaging, all well-written. There's no way to look at that and think that this won't replace jobs. Um, when the number of people that are out there doing these types of things now or ad placement, targeting strategy, media mix, knowing you can ask it any of these questions, but it will also create a bunch of jobs too. And it'll change a bunch of jobs too. And that's how most technology has gone over the last hundred years. Jobs go away, new jobs come, jobs change. And, and I said it before, I think the the best thing you can do is be one of those people who knows how to use it. Um, it, it. There'll come a time where maybe we're not hiring blog writers anymore for websites. Instead, we're hiring people who are good at using tools like ChatGPT, knowing how to prompt it, knowing how to work with it to create really good blogs. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's hard to say what the future is going to look like, but I know for sure, and I have no doubt in saying that being comfortable with these tools, even if it's just basic stuff like write a Facebook post or a tweet for me in a simple tool like ChatGPT, 
comfort and familiarity with that will be a strength and a benefit for marketers and for, for anyone in business over the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as always, Steve, pleasure to have you. Thank you for sharing your insight with us today. Appreciate you having me. Awesome. Well, hey folks, if you'd like to learn more about how AI can help your small business, you can connect with Steve at storyartconsulting.com. Now, if you're ready to start improving your profitability, you can reach us anytime here at education at bpa.com. So as we wrap up another edition of the Profit Break, remember when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. Now this episode, as well as all our previous Profit Break episodes, they're available 24 seven for you and the entire team at bowlinguniversity.net. Now we have new episodes available every month. Mark your calendar, watch your email, join us on Facebook to hear about all the upcoming episodes. Until then, I'm Bart Berger and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.